Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I'm going to be talking about cognitive distortions. So one of my last podcasts, I did cognitive dissonance and went over a little bit about what it was and my hesitation to use it the way most people use it. And there's a article I linked to it, which I will do with this one. I will talk about basically what are the some examples, but I really read from an article, put a little bit of my own two cents in. So I'll begin by talking briefly about what does it mean. So cognitive distortion is recognized as faulty or inaccurate thinking, perception, or belief. An example is over generalization. Cognitive distortion is a normal psychological process that can occur in all people to a greater or lesser extent. And that's really the everything in a nutshell. We all are susceptible to, to this. We all have these type of thinking. And it occurs in people to a greater or lesser extent. And this leads to, you know, there's people who have little personality types. But I'll use overgeneralization right now just as a key point. Then I'll go into an article that lists like 10 of them to give you an idea. So overgeneralization. A cognitive distortion in which an individual views a single event as an inevitable rule. So that, for example, failure at accomplishing one task will predict an endless pattern of defeat in all tasks. 2. The process of extending something beyond the circumstance to which it actually applies. It is a common linguistic tendency of young children to generalize standard grammatical rules to apply to irregular words. Example, pluralizing foot to foot. Now, they show more examples. I just wanted to use this one, and this one might be in the article itself. But just to give you an idea, this is the American Psychological Association. The article itself I'll put a link to, and if I delve into this more, I'll put more links into it. But I don't see this being a very long podcast. I just want to make this a complimentary to the cognitive dissonance. And then I'll probably do one on cognitive behavioral therapy. So what are cognitive distortions? This is from UPMC HealthBeat. I'll put the link in. It's uh, um, reviewed by UPMC Western Behavioral Health. I don't see an article name. I'd like to give credit. Hmm. I don't see, but oh, this happens from time to time. Either it's me, my failure, and my <laughs> stupidity. I don't recognize where it is here. I do see. Hmm. Anyway, I'll put the link in the descriptions anyway. Now, when we talk about these things, we got to remember that science is advancing and brain science and cognitive psychology is expanding greatly. We went through a period of using, um, you know, pseudo intellectual, scientific, Freudian things to explain. And sometimes instincts are right. Sometimes delving into this does help and broaden our understanding. But we're getting better at it with science and I think this is important in this day and age, especially what you see on media and fake news and all these, you know, all the bullshit that goes on. Cognitive distortions are really at the heart of a lot of them. So, 10 examples of what is cognitive distortions. Depending on how we interpret events, our minds can sometimes play tricks on us. They can convince us of things that aren't true even though they feel rational to us. When these inaccurate beliefs influence our thoughts, emotions, and actions, we can feel anxious, stressed, angry, or depressed about ourselves or the world around us. These faulty beliefs are known as cognitive distortions. Anyone can experience cognitive distortion, which the American Psychological Association defines as faulty, 
or inaccurate thinking, perception, or belief. Negativity is often defining characteristic. For some of us, distorted thinking is a momentary blip. We get upset when we fail a math test. We briefly reason that we're bad at math instead of realizing we need to study more, but we typically move on and try again. For others, cognitive distortions are a pattern of thinking that interferes with their lives and relationships. In these cases, distorted thinking can lead to chronic anxiety, depression, and behavioral problems such as misuse of substances. The 10 Most Common Cognitive Distortions Let us review some common cognitive distortion examples. You might see your own thought patterns reflected here, or they may describe someone you know. So it's going to go into 10 common cognitive distortions. By the way, there are like 200, I think, listed in some places. And once, you, once I start reading, I think you'll get the idea of what cognitive distortions are. And for me, it explains what most people use the word cognitive, the words cognitive dissonance for. So I'll begin now. One, engaging in catastrophic thinking. You to expect the worst outcome in any situation. You often find yourself thinking, what if? If your child misses curfew, you imagine he's been in a car accident. If your boss schedules a meeting, you worry you'll be fired. And your thinking spirals from there. You may think of losing your child, getting fired means you'll become homeless, etc. So you get catastrophic thinking. Two, discounting the positive. When something goes right, Say you get a promotion, you acknowledge it but refuse to take credit. Instead, you chalk it up to dumb luck or a mistake. Or you receive many positive comments on an evaluation but choose to focus on a single piece of negative feedback. Here we go. I mean, like I said in the beginning, you know, most people experience these things to a lesser or greater extent. It's when they become rooted in part of your everyday life and you start to spirals when they become you know, problematic. Three, emotional reasoning. You rely on gut feelings over objective evidence to judge yourself and the world. For example, I feel like a bad mother, therefore I must be a bad mother. Now, emotional reasoning is one of the biggest and most uh, used uh, common Cognitive distortions I see around. It's always this, there's so much confidence exuded in people's wording when they talk about things. And when you ask them and dive deep, they get upset, cognitive dissonance, and then they can't, they can't uh, see the truth of what the matter is. So emotional reasoning is, I think I use that for the, the infographic on my thumbnail or for my show, whatever. Number four, labeling, mislabeling. You often define yourself and others with negative labels. In assigning labels, you focus on one past behavior or event. Your coworker is lazy because they came to work late. You're stupid because you failed the math test. Five, mental filtering. You view yourself, your life, and your future through a negative lens. You ignore anything positive. Filtering can increase feelingness, feelings of hopefulness, hopelessness and helplessness. <laughs> oh, what a pro. Number six, jumping to conclusions. Uh -oh. You base your decisions not on what someone says or does, but on what you believe they're thinking. You believe you can read minds or anticipate reactions. You don't ask what the other person thinks or feels. Fortune telling is another form of cognitive distortion related to jumping to conclusions. You insist you can predict the future, regardless of what you do. You'll be famous without putting in the hard work. Or you'll always be a failure, so hard work is a waste of time. Uh-huh. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Okay. Right. Let's not name names. Seven. Overgeneralization. People who overgeneralize apply their experience from one event to another. If your marriage ended in divorce, you think you're not worthy of love. As a result, 
you might conclude you should never date again. Eight, personalization. If people often tell you, stop taking this so personally, then you likely experience personalization. You blame yourself for things outside of your control. You falsely believe that everything that someone says or does is a direct reaction to you. Personalization can convince you that you are being targeted or excluded. It can also cause you to compare yourself to others. Hello? I mean, you see that these are just traits everybody has to a certain extent. And it's not a bad thing or a horrible thing. It's that it leads to, you know, a, a cascade effect of things. That was eight. Nine. Polarized or black and white thinking. This kind of thinking deals in extremes. People in situations are either great or terrible. You believe you're either destined for success or failure. You don't allow room for balanced perspectives or outcomes. Hmm. Very, very uh, familiar. 10. Should state. You have a list of rules for how people should and shouldn't behave, constantly blaming yourself or others for what should have been said or done, but wasn't, can increase stress and anxiety. You will never be happy if you always focus on what should have been. Now, challenging cognitive distortions. Cognitive behavioral therapy is widely used to help break the cycle of distorted thinking. A trained psychotherapist can work with you to retrain your brain to identify and challenge cognitive distortions using thought records, cognitive restructuring ex exercises, and behavioral exercises. And it gives a list, um, gives uh, some links, uh, resources to call, psychiatric hospital, and it talks about the uh, UPMC. So this was just a quick going over. Now there are more, like I said, you could find articles on the 20 common cognitive distortions, but just to get a general idea of what, you know, is present in everybody's mind at most times and how our brains work. And when you go and look into how our brains develop the developmental stages in our life, there are ways of teaching critical thinking that inoculate you to some of these things. So when you have to retrain yourself with cognitive behavior therapy, it's not a bad thing. And I know it's, everybody says it a lot, but the stigma of mental health issues, it just it means said that it has to be what it is, if it's deserved or not because of as I've said sometimes when I talk about these things, this wave of um, bullshit science that came through and, you know, kind of ruined its reputation and its credibility. And I believe it's coming back with it going hand in hand with science. As I said, you have um, brain science and cognitive psychology. That's really impressive. There's a whole host of things you can learn about the brain and how it works and it could inoculate you. And what I mean by that is just by reading these things and listening to these things, you start to structure your brain a certain way. And a lot of times it's, you know, people are stubborn, right? It's you're wired a certain way, but I think it's, un, it's important because the more we understand this brain science and we're going to get to help people more. So how do we acquire and perceive, process, and store information? This is all being worked on, and we're figuring out these things, and it could be very helpful. But in this day and age, it still feels weird to me that people say, oh, I'm going to go get some help, I'm going to go see a psychologist or a psychotherapist. I think more people should be doing it. I wish there wasn't some kind of stigma on it. 
And these things can develop into problematic um, developments for people in their life. And I see it here and there. And I can see the spiral people take. And they jump onto something else. And it feels like they've got an answer when they don't realize it's distorted thinking and perceptions and all these things combined like i said you go through this list and i'll go through them real quick engaging in catastrophic thinking discounting the positive emotional reasoning one of my favorites we rely on gut feelings anyway labeling mislabeling mental filtering Jumping to conclusions, overgeneralization, but these are all things I can I recognize in myself. And as it says, you do tend to move on. It's a blip in your life, right? It's hard to recognize when it's not just a blip. When is it more? When is it, um, you know, harmful for you and the people around you? I link my other podcast with cognitive dissonance with a little side thing on um how would you say uh a link to like QAnon and that level of thinking and i think we have to think on that spectrum now because we are in an age an internet age right everything is out there memes all different ways of manipulating and getting your agenda and your message across. And these could be good intentions, bad intentions. And you really don't know sometimes because we are flawed people. We're humans and it just gets, you know, um, hard. We go around with negative thinking and we think we can change it. But if you don't understand what's behind it, you have to go to a professional. It's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, uh, just bring up examples, you know, stop being a negative thinker and what's to blame. And you got to um, face the facts that we sometimes have exaggerated patterns of thought that's not based on facts. It's just they're not. And you can tend to view things more negatively that way. And that's why I, I tend to use the uh, emotional rule. I mean, there's a, I'll give credit, I hope, to the artist who did that. Uh, I try to remember these things, but, you know, um, it slips my mind to, and I apologize if I do that. But she does a whole um, artwork layout of some cognitive distortions and puts little drawings next to them. And it's a good way to communicate what they, you know, what it is it's like your mind is convincing you of things it's it's a fascinating thing i've always been fascinated with the human mind and if you listen to some of my podcasts you find out what my origin in this was i have no fucking phds no schooling but at a time in my life where i was kind of looking for answers at a young age 16 i delved into psychology and human behavior and it's been a fascination and a personal study of mine over the years. And like cognitive distortions, you engage in them too frequently and it can affect your mental health. We don't understand the impact these things have on us. You could be in the middle of nowhere. You don't know why you're getting depressed. You don't know why you're feeling anxiety, anger, and then you use your intuition and your feelings to attribute it to things. And this is a cycle and it continues. We need a day and age where mental health and going to a psychiatrist is like getting pumped up. You're going to a gym and it's just not, I don't, you know, I don't know if it'll ever be, but if you can learn to identify some cognitive distortions, you can kind of figure out when your mind's playing those tricks on you. You know, you could, reframe and redirect your thoughts this is something you can train which is why i love to teach if anybody will listen a easy tool is a breathing and meditation exercise and it's just a foundation it's just a underlying ping to help people get through day-to-day -day stuff but if you apply it and 
build on it, it could become the foundation for critical thinking to understand and, and recognize when you have these type of things. You can go into fights and arguments and pick out fallacies all you want. You can show them the mistakes they made and why this logic doesn't hold true. And nine times out of ten, it is always backed by blah, 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 get angry type thing. But every once in a while, someone understands. So it clicks in people. And I think that's what's important for doing some of these podcasts. These aren't really in-depth. If you want to get more into it, it would be more of an engagement thing, like I discuss on my movie and TV reviews. There's surface thoughts on, you know, impressions on a movie I watch or a TV. And maybe down the line, I would be more in-depth stuff. Or maybe even do some live stuff eventually. But who knows if I'm getting my act together. So, and like I said, there are like sites that will show you 200 cognitive distortions and you'll match them to your own personality you'll see when you used it you can kind of train yourself and i think mental health is important and again especially now phones on us all the time direct access to information from around the world 24 hours a day and you've got a brain that doesn't shut off look at all the potential there for good and bad and we got to become better thinkers. It's just how it's going to have to be. We'll, maybe we'll evolve that way. But when you can get riled up and you're living in an age where you think people are progressing to a certain point and then they raid the fucking Capitol building. And like I said, I'm linking this to the QAnon, but it's an example of such faulty thinking and it's contagion in a sense. It's group thinking. That could be disastrous. It could be harmful. And it starts with the little things. I wish more people would just teach their kids breathing and meditation exercises. You could easily go and do a little research on the uh, um, development of the human brain at, say, stages in life so you know what and when to teach at certain things. But it's a, this life is fast-paced breakneck for some people and it's just really me hoping for the best and wishing people would uh, do more so there we have it what are cognitive distortions i gave some examples a little bit into the differences so cognitive dissonance would be more descriptive a better descriptor as the feeling of discomfort from holding two different beliefs uh, two different views of the same belief type thing where you have that inner turmoil and it expresses itself in different things as it's a trigger for stress, anxiety, etc. And then we have the cognitive distortions, which are the actual faulty thinking themselves. And like I said, I plan on doing cognitive behavior therapy. A, I'll read an article on that. I'm not sure if something else comes in between this that might catch my attention because I have a lot of things bookmarked. And I might find something um, that would be a better addition than ending it with cognitive behavior therapy. But depends on you, my life and scrambling for work, looking around, you know. We're still trying to get our shit together. And that'll be the end of this podcast. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I really am fascinated on getting some information out there. This is just me reading some articles, putting in a couple of thoughts here and there. But it's a a desire to spread the word and Get some, you know, uh, information out there that might be just going by people real quick that it can get them interested. And if it's that one person out of 10 that gets helped, fine. I'm happy. I hope everybody's doing well. Be safe and healthy out there. My best to you and yours.